Hey there guys and welcome back to PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. Poll's winner is Nathan Drake, the hero of the Uncharted series, so let's see what he has in store for us. So what is that, anyway? Well, I can't make out the writing, but there's something about the drawings. You know, I think I recognize some of these locations. And these? These are coordinates. Someone was plotting a route to something, but... But, how about a break for a change? You know, there's nothing wrong with enjoying a little quiet time. Come on, Sully, you don't go through the trouble of making a map like this unless you're after something pretty valuable. Or hiding it. Sounds like something we need to get a look at. Better us than someone else, right? Yeah, well, speaking of someone else, whoever wrote those pages is gonna want back. Well, people want all kinds of things. It's getting them that's the trick. Fire up the plane. We're heading out. Wait, they still have the plane? I thought the plane was destroyed in like the first half hour of Uncharted 1. Yeah, that's what happens with a lot of the characters in this game. They're pretty much composite characters, like a greatest hits variation, more or less. I mean, in some of his taunts and intros, Drake's talking about Shambhala, which is from Uncharted 2. Yet his default appearance is from Uncharted 1, and his... Opening cutscene would suggest that his story takes place before Uncharted 1 because of the plane is still there. Also, there's no sign of Elena anywhere. Which I don't particularly mind, to be quite honest. Anyway, first up, Hihachi, Spike, and Noriko. Alright, so Drake is, again, probably one of the better characters in the game. He's got a good of, a lot of decent tools at his disposal. He's got guns, he can punch people. He's also got uh, some decent, some nifty tricks on his circle button, which I don't think I use that often. Because I'm not really that good with Nathan Drake, to be quite honest. Not my character of choice. But whatever. I can still... Oh shit. Freaking barrel. Something went wrong there and it ended up with me getting killed by Hihachi. It's not good. I have to step it up. And he's just trying to claw me with those yellow things, which... I think someone said it was from Ratchet and Clank. I kind of saw that coming. It was... Ah, oh, damn it. That was Nathan Drake's level 1. He will chuck out a propane tank, without any propane accessories, I might add, and then shoot at it and hope that it explodes. However, on stages with lots of platforms like this one, the tank will generally get stuck on one of them, and it'll be absolutely useless. So yeah, that kind of sucks. Can't really rely on my level 1 here. Oh well, toss some grenades up there because those are also in Nate's handy dandy toolbox. Alongside his trusty gun. And Nate can actually run and shoot his gun at the same time, which most of the gun characters like Radic and Emmett can do. So that's pretty cool. Definitely got a lot more mobility than respectively Radic and Emmett. Alright, level 2, come on, get in there. Toss a pillar on their asses. Yep, Nate's natural clumsiness even finds his way into his PlayStation All-Stars moveset. In that everything that Nate touches will inevitably break and fall into hundreds of pieces and pretty much threaten his life. Any ledge he will grab will immediately start to crumble, any pipe he hangs onto will immediately come loose from whatever it's attached to. That's the curse of Nathan Drake. Anyway, here, have a Sackboy robot. And then I'll shoot you in the face while it's keeping you busy. No spike, you're not getting anyone with that. Spike's level 1 is horrible. Still better on this stage than Drake's level 1, though. Damn it, he got the sniper rifle before me. Oh shit, how the hell did the sack bot end up attached to me? I thought I was the one who threw it. Oh well. Come on. I'm already in the lead anyway. Only 30 seconds remaining. Not many kills yet. Ihachi killed me once, I killed everyone else once, and I think that's all the deaths so far. And let's add a couple more, for good measure. Drake's level 2 is really good if you can do it from up high or trap opponents between it and a wall so that they really cannot get out. You can roll through it I think, but that's kinda tricky because the pillars are rather big. And if you come out of the roll's invincibility with the pillar still touching you, you will still die. And I think Noriko still got a kill there at the end. Oh well. Geez, Spike, four deaths, zero kills. Alright, who's on the chopping block next? Parappa, Fat Princess, and Sweet Tooth. Again, not much opposition. Parappa's not that good, Fat Princess is not that good. 
neither a sweet tooth really shouldn't be much of a problem for me geez my drakes rank 108 i had no idea i used them that much i think my highest ranked character is definitely radic though i think he's in the 140 somewhere okay the kill zone level not my favorite stage i guess the first part is all right i don't really like it as soon as it gets off the ships all right oh not that skin hugging costume oh he's he's got a chainsaw that's scary also emo parappa either that or parappa who just went to a funeral though that's not really appropriate get up to wear to a funeral i suppose Parampa does have a tuxedo costume, that's what he should be wearing to a funeral. I don't think anyone ever dies in the Parappa the Rapper universe, though. Seems pretty happy-go-lucky. Anyway, Nate with the Spirit Destiny. If only he could get that thing in the Uncharted games, that'd make it so awesome. Oh, you're trying to shoot at me? Here, have this 10-foot-long spear through your abdomen. Ah, damn it, Fireball. Oh shit, Sweet Tooth is already in the lead. Not good, have to snap it up. Come on, barrel, nice. Missiles coming in from everywhere. That, that's pretty much what happens in the kill zone games, even though I've only played the PS4 one. Which I found was rather lackluster, to be quite honest. Probably one of the better examples of what mostly plagues launch titles. They usually look amazing, but gameplay wise and story wise, they're usually not all there. Which was particularly the case with Killzone Shadowfall. Damn it. Alright. Nice, two kills. Come on. Ah, oh, it almost fell on Fat Princess. Oh well. Only have to get one more kill, then I'm in the clear. Though Sweet Tooth is up to his level 1 again. Should probably go after him with the spear. Oh, she oh he nice, he wastes it. Silly Sweet Tooth, that's not how you use your level 1. Is that robot coming for me again? Hate that thing. Alright, drop down. It's pretty much probably one of Nathan Drake's better moves from the air. He conjures up some sort of platform underneath him and immediately breaks because of his curse. And then whoever's standing underneath him will get a shit ton of bricks on their head. Not a very pleasant move to be at the receiving end. Oh nice. Was the oh no, I only needed one more kill. Oh well. Oh Parappa's pissed. All right, Fat Princess, once again, did horrible. And up next, Toro, Ride, and oh, Big Daddy. We haven't really fought against Big Daddy all that much, I believe. He was in the previous episode in the Polygon Man fight, but I don't remember ever fighting him outside of that. Toro shouldn't be much of a problem, because it's freaking Toro. Raiden might be a little more difficult, though. Nate isn't really a fan of characters that are all up in your grill like Raiden is. Alright, Hades stage again. I don't think we've ever played on this stage and actually saw the mix-up happening. Maybe it'll happen in this match, I don't know. Alright, beat up Toro. Animal abuse. Lovely. Oh yeah, and just like, I just noticed that, but just like regular Cole, Nathan Drake's basic square combo has three different outcomes. One is a... Oh, nice. Big Daddy is such a big target for that move. He's got like an uppercut and a kick and I think just a punch that sends them rolling back. None of them are really good hit confirms into his level 1 though, like is the case with regular Cole. No Big Daddy. I wonder what that Big Daddy costume is from though. I'm pretty sure they're not supposed to look like that. Maybe it's the Big Daddy from Bioshock 2 or something? I haven't played... Well, I've played Bioshock 1 for like half an hour. Didn't really like it. Never played Bioshock 2, never played Bioshock Infinite, even though I own both. Then again, I own a shit ton of games that I've never played. Maybe never will, because the collection just keeps growing, and I don't really have a lot of time to play them. So the pile just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and... Double kill. Nice. Well, we kind of got to see the mix-up. You can see the Patapon things popping up. And then the music gets all happy and cheery. Okay, rival battle. We, have, we don't know who Drake's rival is yet. Though it shouldn't take that much 
to figure out who the best rival for a treasure hunter would be. Either I'm going crazy, or some of this gibberish is starting to make sense to me. No, you're definitely going crazy. Those belong to yours truly. <laughs> really? Well, actually, I've kind of grown attached to them. You still don't have any idea what they are, do you? Why don't you let a real treasure hunter take care of them? Well, aren't you adorable? I'll tell you what. You give me those papers, and I'll save you the embarrassment of having them taken off you. I don't think so, Roadkill. Yes, it's Sony's other major thief character, Sly Cooper. Or Sly Raccoon, I'm not exactly... I, th I think Sly Raccoon is the games, and his name's actually... Yeah, his name's Sly Cooper. Alright, let's rumble. I do love how Nate just calls him Roadkill. I am kind of curious as though why Nate didn't completely freak out when he saw a talking raccoon with a cane. Because most of the uh, other realistic characters like Kratos and Cole have characters that are at least human or humanoid. Nate just gets a talking raccoon that just really confusing probably anyway Sly Cooper is probably a pretty hard character to fight against one-on-one -on -one because he's got a lot of good tricks up his sleeve that work great in one-on-one -on -one, but not so much in free-for-all because Sly Cooper is the only character that cannot block and cannot dodge because whenever you press L1 on Sly Cooper all he does is go invisible which I guess is helpful for sneaking up on people, but it's not really that good because you cannot block any sort of attack. And, of course, it's not that hard to spot him while he's invisible because if it was the case, then the player playing a Sly Cooper would probably lose track of him pretty easily. And that's not really what we want to happen either. Come on. Ooh, nice. He keeps falling for the grenades. Right. Wait, where the hell did that come from? Oh yeah, this is also one of Nate's moves. He puts down a little wall, he can hop over it, and then he can shoot and punch people from behind the wall. And the wall soaks up a certain amount of damage. It's pretty useful. Oh, crap. I should have seen that coming. What the hell was that thing? A big pink hippo? I'm not sure what the hell that is. Oh, well. Back to beating up the roadkill. Alright, sit behind the wall and just... Damn it. Of course, he can teleport right around it. Come on, get him in the corner. Now I need him. Right, there we go. Nope, stay. Back in the corner, you evil raccoon. Crap. Oh, there he is. See, you can be invisible all you want, but if you still get hit by, like, a stray projectile, you, your cover will still get blown. That's probably why I don't like playing a Sly Cooper at all. Especially because he's the only character that has that gimmick. Much prefer pretty much every other character to Sly Cooper. Hell, I'd rather play as Toro and Jack than play as Sly Cooper. And Toro and Jack are freaking awful. At least Sly's got some pretty decent moves. Damn it. Not sure where the hell all the electricity comes from, though. He seems to have a lot of moves involving electricity. Maybe it's a reference to Sucker Punch also making the infamous games on top of the Sly Cooper games. Even though they don't make the Sly Cooper games anymore, I think Sly 4 was made by a different studio. Anyway, level 3. Ah, shit, it's that thing again. Oh, shit, it's those things again. Evil pasty golem zombies from Uncharted 1. Turns all the opponents into those and they'll start swarming Nate en masse and then you just have to shoot them down before they kill you. They can't kill you, but if they hit you, they will stun you pretty much wasting a lot of your level 3's time. It's not one of the best level 3's in my opinion. I mean, the transforming people is pretty good, but Nate's rate of fire is pretty low. And if you're playing against 3 opponents, they can very easily overwhelm you. So in 1v1, it's decent. You can probably get 2 kills with it pretty easily on your opponent. But in free-for-all, I would stick with the level 2 in the corner or something probably a much better plan of attack. Alright, Polygon Man, let's roll. You know what would be better on him? Like a big-ass purple mustache. Wait, Nariko again? We fought against Nariko already. Why does the game keep giving me the same characters? Here, have a barrel. Nice. 
works pretty well. Chuck a barrel out, use the machine gun fire to kind of keep him locked in there, and then the barrel will hit him. And possibly explode. Oh look, he's handling an RPG. Nate's no stranger to RPGs, he's using that all the time in the Uncharted games. And she just keeps chucking some sort of frisbee at me. Ah yeah, that's what I liked about Heavenly Sword, the throwing mechanics, and you could like guide the projectile. Ah, damn it! My propane tank! You're gonna pay for that. And the propane accessories as well. With the axe. Axe is pretty good for building up the meter. Also, it gets a, quite a lot of super armor while you're spinning it around like that, so you can just spin right through any attack and still get lots of meter. So that's good. Come on, Nariga. Ah, damn it, Hydra. Where's Kratos when you need him? Someone conjure up a boat so I can ram the mast through that thing's eye socket. Come on. Just want to get Nariko out of the way. Hope the other two characters are not going to be that big of a pain in the ass. Nice. Didn't think the propane tank had that big an explosion to it. Alright, first this clown. Go on, hit it quickly before it'll go away again. The minigun, top of the head. Come on, don't let him get away. Jeez, Nate has hardly any attacks that really hit below him. It's also one of his major flaws. Nate does not handle things well when people approach him from above. Most characters have like a really good anti-air move on like up square or up triangle. Up triangle for Nate is the grenade launcher, but it doesn't really go straight above him. It kind of goes at a 45 degree angle, which is not really that good for anti-air. It's, it's good if enemies are coming from like right in front of you from above, but otherwise not so much. And his up square is the grenade throw, which is absolutely useless as an anti-air move. So that's Nate's biggest weakness. He is not able to defend against attacks from above very well. Isaac's got the axe, Sackboy's got the spear, and yet they're still getting the end of my machine gun in their face. I think it's the AK-47. Ah, oh, damn it. Fell right on top of his cake. No Isaac, no level one for you. Oh, come on, how did I not get Sackboy with that one? It was like right in the middle of the freaking explosion. I'm so calling shenanigans on this. Damn it, stop chucking cake and balls everywhere. Sackboy's tossing his balls out all the time. It's kind of annoying me. All that with Isaac being in my face the entire time. Even though he's not really an up-close-and-personal kind of character. Come on. There we go, level 1. And so much for Sackboy. Alright, now just one more guy to kill. This episode is really shaping up to be the longest one yet. And it's not so much that I just suck with Drake, I'm just... Oh, shit. Forgot about that. Isaac can reflect projectiles with his throw. Yes, with his throw. You heard that correctly. First, he's the only character that can do that. So, I think Isaac is also pretty top tier, actually. Nice. Alright. And the bad part is they're going to be back with Noriko on their side, so... Yay. Alright, shoot him in the face a couple times. And... Start prepping. Jeez, he's missing like half of his face. Kind of reminds me of that uh, that guy from I think the Cleveland show. Some sort of coach, and he has like this big ass hole on the left side of his face. I don't like the Cleveland show that much. It's just kind of they're trying too hard. Can, I can kind of understand why that got cancelled. All right. Jeez, I'm getting way overwhelmed here. Do not want to be in the corner. Especially with Isaac shooting at me and the other two kind of just being there. I have to get to level 2. It's my only chance. Well, either that or the level 3. Level 2 would probably be a pretty good bet if they're all nice. And of course, Sackboy manages to escape. Damn it, Sackboy. I'm not going to step on his electric. Oh, shit. Not good. I have to get away. Up and over then. Ah, oh, crap. Rolled right back onto the shock pad thing. Alright, you piece of sack. You're gonna get it now. If the robot can just start hugging him, he'll be slowed down. Maybe I can nail him with a propane tank. Come on, robot. Stop sucking so much. There we go. Alright. 
Damn it. Oh crap, the robot's off already. Ooh, this I can use if you just let me throw it. There we go. Meter. Just what I need. Damn it. Oh, this. Crap. Come on. Get him with the rockets. Well, that gun kind of sucked. If I can just... Oh, crap. It's that thing. Oh, no. He's inhaled me. That thing would actually not look completely out of place in a Kirby game. I'm guessing. People said it's from Little Big Planet. Well, I guess Little Big Planet and Kirby do kind of share similar sort of art styles. I mean, Kirby and Sackboy, they're both kind of cutesy characters. They can probably fit in each other's games pretty well. Anyway, got my level 2 handy. No, he's not going to suck me up again. Just get him in the corner, and he's not escaping from that one. Gotta love Nathan Drake's level 2. Probably one of the better level 2s in the game. Not quite as good as Parappa's, though. Or Hihachi's. They, Parappa and Hihachi have some damn good level 2s. Anyway, down goes Polygon Man. And what's Nate gonna do with all that superpower? Maybe it'll finally break his curse. Maybe things will no longer fall to pieces at the moment he touches them. That'd be a big improvement for Drake. Alright. Probably Sully's gonna show up in the ending as well. There, you, you can never have enough Sully. Sully! Man, are you a sight for sore eyes. Yeah, yeah, I missed you too. I'm not kidding. You wouldn't believe some of the things I saw out there. And most of them had it in for me. Hey, you don't look any the worse for wear. Couldn't have been that bad. Oh, seriously, these were some real freaks. What is it with you and these stories, Nate? Did you get the treasure or what? Come on, you gotta have more faith in me, Sully. All right, I'll show you what I found, if you think you can handle it. Whoa! Hey, I don't know what you've been up to out there, but this old crate hasn't flown this well in years. Keep it coming, kid. Let's see where it takes us. I punched a chicken. <laughs> oh, Drake, you silly bastard. Alright, don't forget to vote for the next episode's character. Kinda curious as to who's gonna win now. All the big characters are kinda out there already. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.